It's Adam from Edge. I'm back in building 37. Now, we've been here before, uh, including talking to this guy, Rom, who is the director of uh, product marketing for Windows Activation. How are you doing, Rom? Hi, Adam. Nice to see you again. All right. You brought somebody with you. I'll turn the time over to you to do introductions and tell us what's new in Activation. Sure. So, once again, my name is Ram Ratnam. Today, I have with me Kalpesh Patel. He is responsible for our volume activation technologies in Windows 7. So we're going to get started by asking him the most important question that you guys have. How do you get started with the Windows 7 with regards to activation? Sure, Ram. So getting started with Windows 7 and product activation really depends on where you're coming from in your environment. A lot of our customers today, where they're used to their bypass product uh, activation keys, obviously with Windows 7, we have a different model of two types of volume activation product keys. We have the KMS, Key Management Service Key, and the MAC, Multiple Activation Keys, available to you on the Volume License Portal, where you get your Volume License Media today. Okay, so if the customer were to be coming from XP, which of these two keys do they get started with? So, so by default, all customers will get a KMS key. Now the KMS key is meant to be used to stand up what's called a KMS host. And basically think of it that this service will run in your environment and provide an activation response to various Windows 7 or Windows Vista systems that come and talk to it. Okay. So if the customer were to come from Windows Vista, what do they need to do in order to deploy Windows 7? So most of our customers running Windows Vista today are using a KMS host already, and this KMS host could be on Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2003. So what they would need to do is to they would need to install a patch that will enable it to recognize Windows 7 product keys, and then they will need to go to their licensing portals and install the appropriate Windows 7 KMS key on their existing KMS host, and activate it. And then they'll have a single KMS host that's capable of not only activating Windows 7, but Windows Vista in their environment as well. Optionally, what they could do is to deploy a brand new Windows 7 KMS host, put their Windows 7 KMS key on it, and it'll be able to install and activate both Vista and Windows 7 for them. Oh, that's nice to know. So a single KMS is capable of activating not only Windows 7, but also Windows Vista and Windows Server products. What else can it do? So also beginning with uh, Microsoft Office 2010 volume editions, the KMS host will be able to activate those as well, provide uh, that you follow the same steps, install the Microsoft Office, vol Office 2010 volume licenses along with the appropriate Office 2010 volume license key on your KMS host. Okay, so tell me a little bit about deployment in a pilot environment, and more specifically, if I have a very small set of users, is there anything that I need to be knowing or doing differently than using KMS? Okay. So obviously you have the option to use KMS as we talked about, but there are some enhancements that we made to KMS activation. Previously with Windows Vista, we required that the KMS host have at least 25 physical machines in the environment to activate all the machines. But now with, now with Windows 7, that number is still 25, but it can be a mix of physical or virtual machines. Okay. What about Mac? Is there anything new in Mac that is useful and helpful with the Windows 7 deployment? Sure. So just to recap quickly, a Mac key is very much like a retail activation in the sense that you have to activate each machine online with Microsoft or over the telephone, or you can use the volume activation management tool to do what's called a proxy activation if you don't have access to the internet from where your computers are. And you'll be able to find the latest version of the VAMT tool in the Windows automated installation kit that'll be available with Windows 7. Okay, so tell me when we can see and where we can see the descriptive details of these product capabilities more specifically the prescriptive guidance that we had for Windows Vista? Sure, all of our prescriptive guidance is up on our TechNet site, www.technet.com slash volume activation. 
Thanks, Kalpesh. You bet, Ram.